we had orders that we were to stay armed and you'd have to go to a dance or have dinner out somewhere with a 845 revolver strapped on because there was already talk about um, people having reprisals. In the villages of the Punjab, there were few British patrols. The Sikhs began forming jatas, armed bands. Many Sikhs had served in the British army during the war and still had their weapons. These ex-soldiers began to train their Sikh brothers to prevent a Muslim takeover of the Punjab. Jatadar Shingara Singh had recently been released from prison where he served time for assault. He lived in a Sikh majority part of the Punjab. A number of uh, Muslims from our village had come down to see my grandfather and told him that they have heard rumors that uh, certain people are getting together in adjoining villages to attack our village and other villages to kill the Muslims. Aridaman Singh Dillon came from a long line of Sikh warriors. His ancestors had been imprisoned by the British. His grandfather, the village head, refused to join in the wave of communal violence. A committee of Sikh, Hindu and Muslim people were created and they were given uh, small arms like lances and axes. We had a couple of guns and the basic uh, reason for doing this was to guard their own village against the people coming to loot the Muslims of that village and to guard their Muslim friends. And every night they would hold uh, the uh, patrolling uh, throughout the village to guard the village and the Muslims. Seeing the Sikh preparations for war, Muslim villagers decided to launch a first strike. In March 1947, Sikh villages around Ravalpindi came under attack. The Sikhs were heavily outnumbered by Muslims. Their biggest fear was that their women would be taken away, converted and raped. एक मुसलमान सी गलाम रसूल उधर ना सी उसने एक लड़की दी डिमांड की थी कि एक लड़की ये मैंने दे दियो ते असी सारे लोकानु ओ बदमाश टाइप दा आदमी सी और असी सारे लोकानु तो आटा दे आगे The women of the village went into hiding. Bir Bahadur Singh's father decided to act to save the honor of his village. His teenage son looked on. Ten years to forty years, the young girls were very good. The young girls were very good. The young girls were very good. The young girls were आवाज मारी सब दोपहर आपने बेटी नो मान बेटा 
ਆਦਾ ਮੇਰੀ ਭੈਣ ਮਾਨ ਕੋਰ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਜਿਹਦੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਮੇਰੇ ਕੋਲ 2 ਸਾਲ ਵੱਡੀ ਸੀ 18 ਔਰ 19 ਸਾਲ ਦੀ ਸੀ ਔਰ ਬੈਠ ਗਈ ਮੇਰੇ ਪਿਤਾ ਜੀ ਨੇ ਖੰਡਾ ਜਦ ਕਰ ਲਗੇ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਵਾਰ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਸੀ ਉਹ ਲੱਗਿਆ ਨਾ ਵਾਰ ਲੱਗਿਆ ਨਾ ਰੱਬ ਜਾਣੇ ਮੋਹ ਆ ਗਿਆ ਔਰ ਕੀ ਹੋ ਗਿਆ ਮੇਰੀ ਭੈਣ ਨੇ ਆਪਣੀ ਗੁੱਤੇ ਅੰਕ ਕੀਤੀ ਔਰ ਮੇਰੇ ਪਿਤਾ ਜੀ ਨੇ ਬੜੇ ਗੁੱਸੇ ਨਾਲ ਉਹਦਾ ਦੁਪੱਟਾ ਇੰਜ ਕੀਤਾ ਔਰ ਮੋਰੀ ਕਿਰਪਾਨ ਔਰ ਸਿਰ ਉਹ ਪਰੇਸ਼ਾਨ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਦੋਏ ਚਾਚਾ ਭਤੀਜਾ ਨੇ ਮੇਰੇ ਇੱਕ ਹੋਰ ਤਾਂ ਹੈ ਜੀ ਵੀ ਉੱਪਰ ਸਨ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਦਾ ਕਾਫੀ ਵੱਡਾ ਸਰੀਰ ਸੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਨੇ ਕੱਟਣਾ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਕੀਤਾ ਖਟ 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 ਦੀ ਆਵਾਜ਼ ਆਂ ਸੀ ਮੈਂ ਯਕੀਨ ਜਾਣ ਕੇ ਜਾਣਾ 60 ਸਾਲ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਅੱਜ ਦੀ ਯਾਦ ਹੈ ਕਿਸੇ ਨੇ ਹਾਈ ਨਹੀਂ ਕੀਤੀ ਬਸ ਵਾਇਗਰੂ ਦੀ ਆਵਾਜ਼ ਆਉਂਦੀ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਕਿਸੇ ਨੇ ਹਾਈ ਨਹੀਂ ਕੀਤੀ ਕੋਈ ਨਸੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਿਸੇ ਨੇ ਰੋਲਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਪਾਇਆ such scenes were repeated throughout the western punjab in march and april 1947 with the threat of all out conflict a deal became a matter of urgency The Congress leader Pandit Nehru now had power within his grasp. But to get the British out quickly, he had to compromise. He abandoned his dream of a united India and accepted partition. A statement will be read to you tonight giving the final decision of His Majesty's government as to the method by which power will be transferred from British to Indian hands. On the night of June 3rd, 1947, Mount Batten Jinnah and Nehru broadcast the news that they had finally struck a deal they would divide India in two I must honestly appeal to every community and particularly to Muslim India to maintain peace and order I couldn't believe it I couldn't believe it I I I I it was like a dream come true you know mighty forces are at work in the world today and in india and i have no doubt that we are ushering in a period of greatness for india i remember i heaved a sigh of relief that there was partition because we did not want to live with the muslims anymore but there can be no question of coercing any large areas in which one community has a majority to live against their will under a government in which another community has a majority the partition deal involved giving those provinces with a muslim majority to pakistan and those with a hindu one to india but mountbatten and nehru insisted that the punjab and bengal would be treated differently despite their muslim majorities jinnah was forced to accept that both these provinces would be cut in half and divided between india and pakistan The next day at a press conference Mount Batten dropped a bombshell. Britain would not be leaving in June 1948 as had been planned but on August 15th 1947 just 3 months away. When asked why the date had been brought forward by nearly a year Mount Batten replied, "Why should we wait? Waiting would mean that I should be responsible ultimately for law and order." It should have been possible for them to say that look there is no great hurry don't fix a timetable let the let it let it proceed in a more orderly manner but he was a a decisive man this is the job i have to do this is the date by which i'll do it this this was his uh, personality that made uh, the pace of the partition furious impossible to moderate it it was no question of it being too soon it was much too late because in fact when he arrived he, he saw that the situation was so much more volcanic than he'd been led to believe in England and he had that diary that he had over everybody's desk saying however many days to independence because it seemed so unbelievable and the next morning he went into your office 
It was one day less, and it, it certainly concentrated people's minds. But with three months to go, no decision had been made on one crucial matter. Where the border between Pakistan and India would lie. A new boundary had to be urgently drawn up. The man chosen for the task had never been east of Paris. British barrister Sir Cyril Radcliffe. Cyril Radcliffe was a very remarkable man. It, it was not just the quality of his mind, uh, though that was formidable. Perhaps the most formidable I ever encountered, I think. He had this unerring gift for going to the heart of anything he was discussing. He, he came very clearly to a rational conclusion. He was a very rational man. 